northern Rakhine state is off limits to Western journalists. The Burmese military doesn't want us looking into claims that its soldiers have been killing and raping Muslim civilians. So we sent someone in to film secretly. This is the group that triggered the latest violence. Made up of what appeared to be Muslims from the Rohingya minority, they killed nine policemen before fleeing with guns and ammunition. Rohingya areas were quickly sealed and what's been called a clearance operation began. Soldiers moved into this village on the 10th of October. Most people fled, but for some reason, these two brothers, aged 13 and 18, stayed in their home. The soldiers pointed the gun at them and then we took out documents that showed that they're still at school. They didn't accept that and said they are terrorists that have to be killed. We were shown where the boys were shot and their bodies dumped, along with the third man. The soldiers took off the boys' shirts and stole their money. Then they packed their bodies in plastic and took them in a truck. I still don't know where they are now. There have been scores of stories just like this that we've been prevented from verifying. At least 30, possibly as many as 100 Rohingya have died and dozens of women claim to have been raped by soldiers. There has already been one investigation into the violence, led by this man from the local parliament. A Buddhist nationalist, he told me the Rohingya had burnt down their own houses and said there was no way the soldiers could have raped the women. Why not? <laughs> they are very dirty. <laughs> what, what do you mean by that? The Bengali or Rohingya women have a very low standard of living and poor hygiene. They're not attractive, so neither the local Buddhist men or the soldiers are interested in them. Few Burmese have a kind word to say about the Rohingya. So, a year after winning a historic election, where's Myanmar's de facto leader, Aung San Suu Kyi, on all of this? Well, the answer's in India and last week in Japan, but not in Rakhine State, and certainly not demanding an independent investigation. The army isn't under the control of Ms Suu Kyi, but it's striking how little concern this icon of democracy appears to have, both for the plight of the Rohingya people and the abuses being committed by the Burmese military. There are two ways of looking at this. Ms Suu Kyi is weak and knows she can do nothing about Rakhine, or she thinks her relationship with the army and power is more important than trying to tackle abuses against an unloved minority. Jonah Fisher, BBC News, Rakhine State.